Oh, hello. I'm Jeremy Johnson, founder of Metal Liquid Nature. While we've been working on entomological preparation for years, this July we have a pretty expensive and significant exhibition that plays off of the work of Maria Sibylla Mirian's epic book on the metamorphosis of insects in Suriname. The Lloyd Library in Cincinnati has four glorious copies of this 1705 text, ranging from 1705 to the 1730s. We plan to recreate these fantastic images using real insect, animal, and plant specimens. What makes this so fantastic is not only the subject matter, the first time metamorphosis was truly described through illustration, but the subject matter maker, Maria, often considered to be the first true entomologist. All of science has a huge debt to pay her. This is our attempt to begin payments in monthly installments. I've been raising and subsequently mounting insects for quite a long time, so when the opportunity came about to use this work not just as reference, but also directly in an exhibit that involves the original plates, I decided I had to take it on come hell or high water. We'll be producing recreations of 12 plates, using the once nearly impossible to find specimens and turning her illustrations into dioramas like what you would see at a natural history museum. This work is so critically important because Maria chose to illustrate nature in context, one of the first times that that was ever done. She made the concept of metamorphosis undeniable to the scientific community, a community that at the time believed in spontaneous generation. Ever wonder why so many insects look like the plants that they feed on? We know this is adaptation and mimicry now, but in the olden days it was believed that plants, through the grace of God, erupted into life spontaneously. Maria shattered this belief and she had to go halfway around the world to document it correctly. Until then, naturalist painters simply painted what died and was collected on voyages mostly intended for trade. This is her story. She paints as dynamically as she lived, and this is a celebration of that. This exhibition will be a chance for people to see what she saw in life and marvel at the contributions she made during her lifetime, years before people like Audubon, Wallace, and Darwin hit the scientific stage. We are also very grateful for the support of a lot of really amazing institutions in the area. The Cincinnati Zoo, Crone Conservatory, Cincinnati Museum Center, and of course the Lloyd, who's not only simply supporting the effort, but is actively engaged in every single aspect of this project. But while we have a ton of institutional support, we don't have any financial support. We need your help to recognize such a remarkable woman who led what is assumed to be the very first scientific expedition for no other purpose than to learn. Well, there you have it. Please give us some consideration. But before you go, here are some of my favorite home-raised babies enjoying a little lunch. Well, there you have it. So you've heard our pitch. We've got a lot of things to do. And uh, I, I just want to take a little bit of a moment to express the importance of Maria Sibylla Marian. She discovered metamorphosis in the sense that she provided proof of it to the naturalist community, or the natural philosopher, the, the natural philosophers of the age. This is a time before science really took hold. So a lot of the, the, the names and the, the species and things like that that we're working with on the Suriname text, we've had to research pretty extensively because this is before Linnaeus. This is before binomial nomenclature. These books that exist from 1705, these are hand-painted by her. It's, it's not like just sending these things out to a publisher and, and having colorists do it. Uh, the, the original texts that we're talking about were directly touched by this fantastic woman from 1705. So one of the one of the insects that she worked with a lot, and this is the morpho butterfly. So this is a butterfly that gains its its uh, its its color through iridescence. Okay. So so this is this is a non-pigmented insect, meaning it's like she's trying to replicate something in paint that does not have a color. It it has a mirror blue finish, like a steel blue finish. But this is a butterfly 
from 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 fore wing to hind wing has this mirror glow to it and she's trying to to find a way trying to find pigments by the way it's not like you go to michael's or hobby lobby and you just pick up a, a, a tube of paint and hey this looks like morpho blue the color doesn't exist and and the the pigments and the minerals that are used to, in order to recreate this which she was doing herself by the way uh requires years and years and years of experience to even get that far and now trying to illustrate an impossible thing well she did it and she did it faithfully so this is why we want to present the form it is complicated it's not a photograph, and even with photography, it's, it's, it's not a good enough answer. So you can go online right now, look up Morpho Butterfly, and take and see a picture of it. It's like, damn, that's a blue butterfly. Look at one in reality, and what we're going to present to you is Morpho in reality. You're going to see it right now. You get, you're going to be able to take your little cell phone light and shine it back and forth and see how this thing mirrors back at you. And that's not the only specimen, of course, that, uh, that, that, that shares that sort of quality. Color is complicated and I think one of the things that I want to to express to everybody through this show is how astute she was at color and not just color on paintings that she was doing on her own in like a gallery setting like uh, like like da Vinci or something like that but uh, so in a lot of ways this is a before and after a before science after science and I think it's also very important for people to have a direct connection, a direct uh, lineage to the people that have made this type of work possible. And one of those earliest, the grandmother, the, 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 <laughs> the first lady of naturalism is going to be Maria. So yeah, it's worth it. It's worth the exhibition. It's worth taking on the road. It's worth uh, months of study, months of research, interviews with, with people from all over the world to make this happen. So we're at the, the point now in which we're at the cusp. We've got our research. We've got, <laughs> we've got resources for the plant material, the insects, the reptiles. Now it's just a point of putting all this together and this is why we're here. <laughs>